This teaching changed all of our lives. We found out that Satan does not have power over us. We have power over him. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Today on the Believer's Voice of Victory, join Gloria Copeland and special guest Billy Brim as they conclude this week's series with a teaching on heaven. Hear a special testimony of what heaven is really like and how you can live in days of heaven on earth. Hello, everybody. I'm Gloria Copeland. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Billy Brim from Prayer Mountain in the Ozarks is with us. Billy has been sharing some wonderful insights about the authority that we have in Jesus. That changed all of our lives, Billy's, Ken's, mine, and many, many thousands of others. When we learn that we were not under Satan's thumb, he's under our authority. Under our can, feet. He's under our feet. We can tell him to get out. We can refuse to give him place, the scripture says, and he has to flee from us at the name of Jesus. And it's been really good. So if you've missed it, go back to the internet and listen to it because this teaching changed all of our lives. We found out that Satan does not have power over us. We have power over him in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And we needed that, didn't we, no, Billy? We needed I like the way you said that. It made me think. You said, he's not, we're not under his thumb He's under our feet. That's right. That's exactly right. That's right, right. because when in Ephesians, where it says that God raised Christ from the dead and seated him on his own right hand, and he put everything, all principality, power, might, and dominion under his feet. And when he raised him, he raised us. That's right. He gave him to be head over the body. And we need it. He's the head. We're the body. The head and the body were raised together and seated together. And the feet are in the body. And it particularly mentions the it particularly mentions the church. It says that when he raised him from the dead and set him on his own right hand in the heavenlies, he raised him far above all principality, above. power, and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age and world, but also in that which is to come, and has put all things Thank under you. his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. His feet are in his, his body. feet are in the body. And when he raised the head, he raised the feet. Glory to he God. raised the head, he raised the body. And what's more, we've been living in that authority, taking authority over the devil for a lot of years, yes. more than we want to tell you. <laughs> but decades. And we, Billy and Ken and I, we were right there at the, to hear from Brother Hagin before he left this earth, and he taught us how to live in authority, take authority. And uh, we, we began to come out of poverty. We began to take authority over the spirit of poverty. And we began to take authority over sickness and disease and devils that would try to attack our family, our children. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been a lot of years, Billy, Thank that God we've been we doing it. this. That's Thank right. God we knew it. And I'll tell I can you, tell it you right now, everything. There wouldn't be any Kenneth Copeland Ministries if he didn't know this. No. There wouldn't be any, any ministry... Uh, Prayer Mountain, the Glorious Church. No. It, no. I'm telling you, we have to use that authority all That's the time right. against the enemy. Use, we have to use that authority over money. Yes. Over sickness, disease, over attacks of the enemy. And that's why we're able to do what we do. That's exactly right. Praise Lord. the Lord. We've been redeemed from the curse. Hallelujah. Satan's under our feet. And the name of Jesus belongs to us. Now, we've been reading here from Macmillan, who had a great revelation of this. Yes, and that's going to be did. in our packet. He says... The rebel holders of authority. It is necessary to state here what is commonly understood by those who carefully study the word. That the kingdoms of this world, the kingdoms of this world, the Babylonian systems Ken's mm -hmm. been talking about, are under the control and leadership of satanic principles, principalities, satanic principalities. The great head of these is called in the Bible, uh, the God of this world, the prince of the powers of the air, the prince of this world. Even when he tempted Jesus, he claimed that he had kingdoms to offer. 
And it's a, it was a real temptation. Mm -hmm. He had them. Although a rebel against the Most High, and now under judgment of dispossession, he is still at large. And as the masses of mankind are also rebels, he maintains over them an unquestioned because unsuspected rule. Yes. Their eyes being blinded to his dominance. So there they are. They're in the air. There's like a double kingdom system. The whole world lies in darkness. Brother Hagen told me before he um, left, well, before I left working for him, actually, it was sitting at my desk one day, probably in the late 70s. He said, before Jesus comes, um, it's, it's going to be a change of an age. It's not the end of things. It'll be the beginning of an age. Mm -hmm. But he said, it's not going to be just as though you were stepping over a log and everything's different all of a sudden one day. No, he said, there are going to be things from that age coming over into this age. And he said, there will be angels. There will be a pro, uh, prolific sightings of angels and activities of angels. And he said, there will be people who will go to the other side, to the glory world, to heaven. And they'll come back and give us a witness of it. Some of them, he said, will be near death experiences. Some of them maybe die and come back. And he said, uh, then others will just go there and come back. And he said, you are to write about it. Well, I've never written a book, but I'm telling you, is it ever happening now? And they're going to heaven and writing their own books. One of the ones I really like is this little guy, um, Colton Burpo. He was only four years old. His dad, Todd Burpo, is a pastor. And um, he'd had a ruptured appendix that wasn't treated exactly right. And, um, and so he, he went to heaven. And he just, he just just started talking about it. He's four. They didn't know he went to heaven, you know, and they nursed him back to health and this and that. And one day he said to his daddy, you know why I got to come back? Well, his daddy didn't know he'd been there. And then they, he started telling them about heaven. Well, one thing little, little Todd liked to do was play those superheroes. You know where the guys put a towel around their yeah, neck, sure. you know, and mm -hmm. or nowadays that's what my grandkids did. But they may have little robes they buy, little little capes they buy. I don't know. But anyway, he loved to do that, and he loved to stick a sword in his uh, jeans, you know. And then he would he would be the superhero, and he would kill all the bad guys. So his mother said to him one day, uh, "I guess you didn't like that about heaven that there are no swords up there." Colton's giddy excitement vanished as quickly as if an invisible hand had wiped his smile off with an eraser. He drew himself up to his full height and looked down at Sonia, his mother, who was sitting on the floor they were playing. There are two swords in heaven, he said. Surprised at his intensity, Sonia shot me a sideways glance, then kind of drew her head back and smiled at Colton. Hmm, okay, why do they need swords in heaven? Mom, Colton said, Satan's not in hell yet, almost as if to scold her. The angels carry swords to keep Satan out of heaven. And then he went over, and in the next chapter, he talked about the war that's coming, you know, when we come back with Jesus on the... So there is this second heavens or this heavenly place. Uh, we have the demons here. We have hierarchies. And then there's one, uh, and there's wicked spirits in the heavenlies. We have authority over them. Another person who saw them is Dr. Gary Wood. Now, Gary Wood, in 1966, he and his um, sister were, uh, it was Christmas time, they were singing Silent Night. And they were driving in a car, coming home from uh, someplace they'd been. And there was a semi parked in the road with no lights on, and they plowed into it. Gary was killed. He died and went to heaven. And uh, he's written a book, A Place Called Heaven. It's a, I love this book because he didn't want to and come he back. he came back. He came back. She was at the side of the road praying, using Jesus' name. This is my sister. Uh, this is my brother. I don't want him to go. And uh, Jesus told Gary, you'll have to go back. She's using that name. So um, he went back and Jesus told him, now, I want you to tell them that, uh, make Jesus real to them. And tell them three things will happen before I return. There will be a spirit of restoration between brethren. A spirit of prayer will be poured out. That's happening. And uh, an outburst of miracles. So Praise now God. we're coming to the outburst yes, of miracles right. part. And uh, at Prayer Mountain, every third Sunday in the month, 
uh, we're streaming a miracle service. And uh, Dr. Wood was with us for a miracle service uh, that we had back in uh, October 16. You can go online. It's archived. And he told about his experience of going to heaven and then ministered, and we had miracles. I had him sit down with me after that service, and I wanted him to talk to you about what he saw, and it's recorded in this book, of, that, uh, of those spirits. So uh, would you roll that clip, please? We've just finished a healing and miracle service here on Prayer Mountain. And we invited as our special guest, Dr. Gary Wood from Sugarland, Texas. And Gary, in 1966, was killed in an automobile accident. He has a wonderful book, A Place Called Heaven. And he saw many things there, and I had him share that today. But for right now, for you in this television audience, because of what we're teaching on, I want him to explain when he lifted you up and what did you see about this, the prayers and the demons. When I was in heaven, Billy, I looked down and I saw the earth in circles. And I saw Satan's domain where he ruled with many evil spirits. And these spirits were released upon people, causing them to steal, to kill, to commit murder and rape and all kinds of hideous things. And when people would believe those demons and receive the lies that the demons were saying to them, then swarms of demons would come in over regions and inhabit that whole region or city or household or uh, a particular area. And those demons would control those people then. They would just be like puppets. And those, and those demons would cause all kinds of uh, horrific things to transpire. Then I saw God's people pray using the power of the name of Jesus. And as we would use the power of the name of Jesus, our prayers would go up like sharp barbed arrows and hit that swarm of flies and that demonic opposition and just burst it asunder and light would burst through and then the heavens would be opened and the prayers and the blessings, the blessings would pour out and the prayers of the people then would be answered. Thank you, Gary. Thank you very much. Now we see this uh, actually in that prayer that we pray in Ephesians where the Lord tells us that he raised Christ above all principality, power, might, and dominion. And then it says in chapter 2, and you has he quickened who were dead. Amplified says slain in your trespasses and sins. Now listen to this part. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the authority of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. That's what Gary was talking about. Hmm. Those powers of the air, those evil princes, they, they, they can send swarms and when people will yield to them, then they work in those children of disobedience, among whom we all had our lifestyle in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and we were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So this world, uh, those, those demonic um, spirits in the heavenlies are attempting to rule down through men on the, on the earth. And uh, Gary talked to me about certain cities and what demons were in control there. And uh, I don't want to mention them over the air. But um, bless the Lord, we have authority over them. We are seated. The Bible tells us that when he raised Jesus, when he raised the head, he raised the body. He quickened us and he quickened us when he quickened Jesus. He raised us when he raised Jesus. He seated us when he seated Jesus. So we are in him positionally at his yeah. right hand. We and we him. share that throne with him. Now, uh, according, now back to uh, Macmillan here. The seats of authority of those rebellious spiritual rulers are in the heavenlies. From there, they have dominated the, he the human race since its fall. There's low-level devils down here. They take their orders from higher up, guys. From there, they have dominated the human race since its fall. There they will remain until the divine purpose of the ages is complete. Now, how do you do it? How do you rule and reign? Well, I like this book because of page 27. When I give this book out to somebody, I say, read this book and do page 27. Here's page 27. 
Do we believe that God, quote, hath quickened us together with Christ and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus? If we do, our reaction to it will be a fervent, this is like a prayer you pray, Lord, I accept your gracious word. I believe that you have thus wrought for me. In humble faith, I do now take my seat in the heavenlies, in Christ Jesus, at your right hand. Teach me how to fulfill this sacred ministry, yes, amen. our ministry in the heavenlies. Teach me how to exercise the authority that you have entrusted to me. Train me day by day that I may attain to the full stature of the perfect man in Christ, so that in me your purpose of the ages may be fulfilled. Amen. Then he Praise goes on. God. If we are walking in the Spirit, our normal life is in the heavenlies. That's what Colossians 3, That's 1 right. says. To secure the consciousness of this, there must be the daily acceptance of the fact. Daily acceptance of the fact. Let us, morning by morning, as one of our first acts of worship, take our seat with Christ, as suggested in the previous paragraph, and thank God for all that it implies. Let us often remind ourselves that we are seated far above, far above. all the powers of the air and that they are in subjection to us. As our faith learns to use the name and the authority of Jesus, we shall find the spiritual forces yielding obedience in ways that will surprise us as we continue to abide closely in Him. Our prayers for the advancement of the kingdom will become less and less the uttering of petitions and will increasingly manifest the exercise of a spiritual authority that recognizes no national boundaries but fearlessly binds the forces of darkness Amen. in any part of the world. Praise God. So how do you do it? Another place in here, he said, we have two platforms to defeat him. Not to defeat him, but to enforce the defeat yes, Jesus did. Right. The authority of the risen Lord and our sitting in him and the blood of the Lamb and our testimony to it. So here's what I do early in the morning. First thing when I get up, first thing in bed, I apply for the blood to be on me. But then really early in the morning, and I don't like to be called in the morning. I don't answer the phone in the morning. Don't call me in the mornings because my mornings are for God. And Amen. I get up and I sit in a chair. I have to have a chair by the window. I'm getting a new house and I have to, I, I checked out to see if I could have a chair by the window. <laughs> and out this chair, in this chair, I get a soft, comfortable chair, and I sit in that chair, and I pray Ephesians 1, 17, right down through. I come all the way down through verse 23. I read verse 1 in chapter 2. I skip to verse 4, for God raised me. And then I turn, because I'm seated there. In my mind's eye, I'm seated at the right hand of the Father. So I turn to the left, and I thank the Lord for the great plan of redemption that he planned and sent the Lord Jesus Christ to consummate and that through his blood and through his word, it is written that I am seated at his own right hand. It's hard to wrap my mind around. Sometimes I tell the Lord, in fact, I can't, but it is written. You said it. So therefore here I am up at your right hand. And then I say something like this. Now, father, to bring you glory, I'm going to rule. Now you told us it is written in Romans 5, 17, that we are to reign in life as yeah, kings, that's right. it says in the Amplified. So I'm going to right now reign over the kingdom of darkness in my life today. And this is all for your glory. And then I turn and I say something like, kingdom of darkness, you listen to me. I'm seated at the right hand of the Father. It is written, I'm at the right hand of the Father. And I'm here right now to, to put limits on you today. 
I plead the blood of Jesus. It is written, I overcome you by the blood of Jesus. I draw blood luring around all the good works that God has ordained that I should walk in. I got that phrase from Ephesians. And then I name the good works. Prayer Mountain in the Galilee, Prayer Mountain in the Ozarks, Prayer Mountain, uh, all this property around here, all the people who work here in the Ozarks, a glorious first church fellowship in Collinsville, uh, Champions for Christ, uh, uh, the Hope Center. And then I say, and you stay away from my family. I draw the blood ring yeah, around. Yeah. And I name them all. Tom, Shelley, Kylie, Cody, Aubrey, Eileen, Lynn, Terry, Lynn, Quetzi, Shoshana, Isaac, Nathaniel, Brenda, Tony, Jared, Jessica, Brandon, Hannah, Chip, Candace, Taylor, Caleb, Kent, Brim, and me, spirit, soul, and body. You stay away from all of us. That's right. I put the blood over all of us, the blood of Jesus Christ. And then I might need to tell him, now we're going to have a meeting next week, and you're staying away from it. I plead the blood against our monies. You get your hands yes, off right. of our money. You get our, your hands off the money for our aviation account. Somebody gave us an airplane. You get your hands off the money that are coming to build our place in Israel. You get your hands off the money for this or for that. You and I tell him where to go, uh, uh, where he cannot go. I tell him basically where he cannot go. And then I turn back to the Lord and I say, Father, this is for your glory. And this is because you told me that I could do it. You have to do it. Yes, you have right. to set your watch. Your you set your blood watch morning and night. You take your authority. I don't go all through that at night. At night time, just before I'm going to bed, I say, I speak the power of the blood and put the blood over everything at night and over me. First thing in the morning too. I'm setting the watch because these are dangerous times. The Bible says in the last days, perilous times will come. Yes. Well, it is perilous. But if you have authority, it is not God's will that you be overcome even once. You will have to do it because you believe it in your heart. You believe God raised you in your heart. And with your mouth, you proclaim it That's where right. you're seated. That's right. You proclaim the blood. I put Satan's big old, um, he I'd say one of his most powerful uh, tools is deception. He deceives well, yeah. you. So I, I learned from Grace Roos to put the blood of Jesus over my head that I would not be deceived. Mm -hmm. And I come to see that as the helmet of salvation. Our salvation is only by the blood of Jesus. That's right. So sometimes I say, in the name of Jesus, I put on that helmet of salvation. I cover my head with the blood of Jesus. I will not be deceived. You can do that for your children before they go to school. You can drive around your school when you take your child to school and draw a bloodline, there'll be nobody come in there with the weapons that day to disrupt things. You set the bloodline Praise and it God. is where you set it. You can find out about it in our protection package. Amen. Billy has shared some awesome information with us this week about our well-being, what we can do. And now we have to take that, act on it, do what she's learned to do, and we'll have that protection in our lives. Billy and I'll be right back. He has called us to be free and be blessed and walk in the power and the outpouring of that blessing. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. The Branson Victory Campaign, March 8th through the 10th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. Living Victory West Coast Faith Encounter, Anaheim, California, April 6th and 7th with Kenneth Copeland and Dr. Stephen and Kelly Swisher. Celebrate 30 years in Europe at the Europe Victory Campaign, May 10th through 12th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Excel Center in London, UK. Living Victory Pacific Rim Faith Encounter, Honolulu, Hawaii, June 15th and 16th with Kenneth Copeland and Dr. Stephen and Kelly Swisher. The Southwest Believers Convention, July 2nd through 7th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and their special guests in Fort Worth, Texas. For more information on these and other events, go to events.kcm.org. You know, Ken and I never learned how to increase financially until we learned how to take authority over money and command it to come mm -hmm. to us in Jesus' name. We learned that. 
And, uh, and that's what you need to do. And you become sowers. We became sowers and we took authority and we spoke the return, the hundredfold return to come. And we still do that. And as we tithe, as we sow, tithe. we stand and we believe God. So Billy and I are going to pray over your finances today mm -hmm. as you sow your offering and you would agree with us and you begin to expect things to happen. You say, well, I don't know if it'll work for me. I can tell you it won't work for you. You have to do it by faith. You have to take it by faith, whatever it is. Healing, you don't say, well, Lord, if it be your will, heal me. No, you've got to know what God's will is before you have faith. Certainly. We know it's God's will for you to prosper. Father, in the name, in the of, name Jesus, of Jesus, Billy and I pray over every family every represented family. in this audience. We believe Satan. with them, Father, for the hundredfold return to work in their lives every day. We thank you for blessing the tithers and increasing them in every way revealing to all of us what to do as we sow our way into continual prosperity. We thank you for it. We pray for every family. We thank you for the healing anointing flowing you, right Lord. now, thank Lord, you, Lord, into people as they watch. Be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Jobs Christ. Come. Jobs, the right jobs. jobs. Yes, people. amen. Billy and I agree with you for yes, the perfect, perfect place. Job. God's will for you right now yes. that you'll know and you'll hear and you'll receive that perfect Thank position you, in, Jesus in Jesus' name. So Billy and I love you. We believe with you. Oh, we're glad you've joined us on these broadcasts. And if you've missed any, go back and hear it because it's vital information to your well-being. Hallelujah. We'll see you again soon. Get in a good church that preaches the word and stay there. Listen and do what God says in his word. Join Ken and me as we learn to have victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. Happy Glory. birthday again this Sunday. Thank you. You'll be one year older. I'll be one year older. Glory be to God. <laughs> I'm growing up, folks. I'm growing up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Billy and I have enjoyed being with you, visiting with you, and giving you the word of God. We've enjoyed preaching to each other. Yes. It's been a great week. This is Gloria Copeland and Billy Brim reminding you that Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Thanks for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory. For this week's broadcasts on DVD or CD, today's product offer, or for more information on KCM, visit kcm.org. Online, you'll find free ministry resources to help you live every day in faith. Receive God's promise that everything is going to be all right. Hello, everybody. We're Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. We're inviting you to join us for a very special series of broadcasts on New Testament partnership in the anointing of God. Please, don't miss this. It is vital to our very well being in the times we're living in. Amen. You won't want to miss these special broadcasts.